I want to do is take up where I left off two weeks ago. As you know, Pastor Joe shared with you last week, um, and I shared at the other church, but this morning, I want us to take cognizance of the fact that God is busy. He's, the word that came to me last night in my spirit I was, as I was going through it, He's busy honing us. He's busy sharpening us. He's busy getting us ready. He's busy getting His people ready for where we are going in this world system right now. And God's people are to be separate, separate from the things of the world. We are not to be partakers of the things of the world. We are to be called separate. And Jesus said, be ye separate. Be ye apart from it. And the reason why we are supposed to be apart from it is so that we can learn from Father God when we see who He is in His person and His majesty and magnificence. We take Him and we take Him into the world and we show Him to the world. And we need to be accurate representatives of our Father God this morning. Amen. This morning... Um, I usually don't, uh, uh, Saturday nights and Sunday mornings I switch my phone off because I need to be focused on the things of the presence of God and focused on the things of God completely. But this morning as I just switched it on, there was a message from um, a young guy who ministered in our church a while ago in, in praise and worship. It's a good friend of Reynos. His name is Kubus, Kubus Berg. And this morning what he does is he puts little video clips out. Very good little clips that he puts out and he encourages a lot of young people and he's, he's got a lot of people that he uplifts and, and helps and, and, and gives a word in season. But this morning as I switched on, there was a little message from Kubus that said, Die wereld drainier ons. He said that in Afrikaans. Die wereld drainier ons. What that is in English is the world is draining us. And I have seen over the past couple of weeks and even months that uh, of this very year, 2018, from the beginning of the year, how the world system has so drained the people of God and sapped their energy with all the stuff that has happened. And we said two weeks ago when I ministered and I started off on this, I said that it's like the people of God have been winded. You know when you... When, when, when you play rugby or when you play a sport and, and somebody knocks into you but they knock you in the stomach, that few moments that you are winded, that you cannot catch your breath. You know when you like play netball with some of the people, you know, um, I won't mention any names but if, over to my left here. And they've wanted the pastor to come and play netball with them. You know, some of the tall guys and the, and the strong guys. And I've refused because I've heard afterwards of how it went, you see. And how... <laughs> how rough it gets on the netball court. So I'll rather sit in front of the TV and watch the rugby. I think I'll stick with that for now. But when you get winded, what happens as you are battling to what? Catch your breath. And this is what I'm seeing and that has happened to so many people in, 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 the, in, the, in the church right now that there are multiple facet of faceted attacks that has come against the people of God. And two weeks ago I shared a couple of thoughts with you and we're talking this morning about spiritual warfare basically and what I'm going to do this morning is talk a little bit about the strategies that, that you can have in spiritual warfare that will help you get to the next level. And we're going to look at positioning yourself in training for reigning. Now we as the people of God have been called to reign in this life even right here right now. I'm still surprised that so many Christian people, beautiful people of God, who think that they're going to have control of the devil once they get to heaven. Well, they are going to have control over the devil once they get to heaven because he's not going to be there. Hello? He's been kicked out, never to go back. So the thing is, we as the people of God right here in this life, here and now, need to rule and to reign. Listen to me. Those of you who have children will know, when you have your child on a, on, a, on a rugby field, when you have your child on a sports field, when you have your, your child in a sports discipline doing something, and that child of yours, that daughter or son, is busy overcoming the, the opponent, and they're busy winning, what does it feel like as a parent for you? Come on now. Huh? I watch these parents when I watch varsity rugby and you, and you see these people next to the field and you see the teachers and you, you watch this, especially the school rugby and, and, and you watch the parents next to the field. The parents next to the field are as entertaining as the match itself. <laughs> have you noticed, have you seen some moms that are quite subdued and they are very... They're, they're very in their place when they are around town and in the mall. But let their son get on the rugby field. 
Don't see me I'm an auntie. Because I've seen them. They said that rap me feel. Man, they lose all dignity. Like David when he praised the Lord and he lost his dignity and he was accused of it. And he said, listen, you ain't seen nothing yet, babe. You want to see me praise the Lord. Now these aunties next to the field, that's what they do. As they rejoice, especially. Have you heard when their son gets the ball and he starts running? Come on now. Now, why am I saying all of this? We are in a battle. We are in a battle. We are on the battlefield. And just think how your father God feels when you start gaining the ascendancy and the victory over the enemy that has been harassing you and has been coming against you, who has been standing against you, has been throwing curveballs at you, and you are busy winning the match. How does Father God's heart feel at that particular point in time? Yes. I think he sits up there and he cheers you on. He says, come on, Elvin. That's it. I've been waiting for that, Elvin. Suck it to him, Elvin. <laughs> you see, because we are children of God. Why wait till heaven to reign? Do it now. Yes. And I'm going to show you some strategies of how you can do that right now. We said uh, two weeks ago, God says, I'm training you in your praise. I'm training for reigning. I'm training you for reigning through your praise. Worship is your warfare. Worship is warfare one already. Then we go to my people. God says, magnify me. And we stopped last time when, when, when we said, God said He wants us to magnify His magnificence. Are you getting this this morning? We need to magnify His magnificence. And I made a statement two weeks ago when I said to you, sometimes God's people praise their praise and they worship their worship. Where they, it becomes like just another ritual. That means that you're worshipping the worship. You should always know that when you come into a place of worship, whether it's corporate or whether you're on your own at home, you have Him as your audience of one and you worship Him only. And I say at times, if you are not sure what to worship, just be silent before Him because a lot of times your silence is worship unto Him because you are contemplating Him. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. And you know it. You know that you know that you know. There's nobody on this earth that can come to me now and say to me, I, 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 I do not believe that there is a God and you cannot believe it yourself because where's the evidence? I actually love it when people come with stuff like that. I love to debate and defend the faith, the things that I do believe. Listen, I can just give you one example and I, one thing is once I was lost, now I am found. Once I was a rascal, now I am a righteous man of God. And if you knew me before and you know me now, you'll say, it's a miracle. Yes, amen. God performed a miracle when He saved you, Johan Portita, and you too who are seated here this morning. Amen. Yes, yes. That's just one of the evidences. And then the Bible says, behold the magnitude of God's creation. Look at, look, how can you look at that and not know that there is a God or believe there is a God? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Then we said, praise is your protection. Directed divine praise brings divine protection. Listen, there's a lot of stuff happening right now and thieves are breaking in and stealing and, and uh, crime is rife in our country. I want to say to you, praise is your protection. Amen. You praise and worship in your home. Listen to me. You get angels encamped around that place keeping you safe at all times. Yes. Let praise and worship be part of what you do at home every single day. Yes. You wonder why I don't sing so well. God doesn't care. <laughs> By the time it reaches heaven, it's Pavarotti. I tell you that. All right? So don't worry about being false. But I want to show you a scripture that is from the Passion Translation. This scripture is absolutely powerful. Look at this. It says, Yet I know you are most holy. This, this psalm, I probably read it on this, this verse, the few verse, verses here. I don't know how many times, over and over. Every time I read it, there was something new that came off the page to me. It says, you are most holy, it is indisputable. You are the enthroned God, surrounded with songs. Hallelujah. This morning, the songs that went up, it surrounded the throne of God. And those of us who worship out of our hearts and for who He is, and we honor Him and we glorify Him. I want to say something to you. Those of you who don't praise the Lord here, you are going to, listen, that's all you're going to do in heaven. Might as well get used to it here. Amen. And then again, the Bible says, only the dead praise not the Lord. All right, so I'm, I'm sure you're not in that category. All right. 
You are the enthroned God, surrounded with songs, living among, watch this, the shouted praises of your princely people. Woo! He is surrounded by the shouts of His princely people. How many of you at times shout to the Lord? Yes. I see those hands went like this. <laughs> I sometimes, when I read something that strikes gold in my spirit, I get so excited. And I shout it to the Lord. And you say, but Johan, why do you shout to God? He's not deaf. And I go, he's not nervous either. <laughs> he likes the shouts of his people. That's why Darlene Sheck, years ago, got a revelation about Shout to the Lord. And she wrote a song about it and became a worldwide hit. And we still sing it today. My Jesus, my Savior. Yes. Huh? Come on. Shout to the Lord, all the people of the earth. We shout because we're a happy people and we're going somewhere. We've got a destination. Listen to this. He's, he's surrounded by the shouts of His people. Our Father's faith was in you. This is what He is saying. David is saying, the forefathers, their faith was in God. Over and over they trusted in you, believing in you. And you came through. Hallelujah. Amen. Every time they cried to you in their despair. Despair, I looked up the word, it means hopelessness. Simple. You were faithful to deliver them. You did not disappointing. I want to say to you today, when you get into a line of praise and worship and you become a, it becomes a habit to you, I want to say to you, listen to me, God cannot disappoint you. You will not be disappointed because the Almighty will come through for you. There has been an intensity of opposition lately that has left many feeling winded and many have felt that they are surrounded by opposition and circumstances that are magnifying themselves against them. Amplification and multi multiplication of troubles has come. If I have to give you a list of all the people over the past couple of weeks that have said prayer requests, said, please pray for this, will you pray? It's people in hospital. It is people that have been in motor car accidents. It's people that have had their homes broken into. It's people that have been harmed and hurt. I want to say to you guys, we are in an all-out war. Yes. And you cannot at this time as a Christian be lackadaisy, tiptoeing through the tulips with not having enough power to blow the fuzz of a peanut. I want to say to you, it's time that you rise up and get strong in the things of God so that you can resist the enemy steadfast in the faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't ask me to repeat that. <laughs> you'll have to. You'll have to. Uh, watch, the, watch it on the, Because this goes out on YouTube. You can go watch it again. Many have been crying out for the deliverance of God, for breakthrough. But heaven is saying, position yourself. Position yourself for your commission. Listen, any call of God comes with a commission. Those of you this morning, every single one of you that have received something from God, I want to say to you, don't neglect the call of God on your life. Because the time is going to come that the commissioning is there. What is the commissioning? It's when God enlists you and says, now is the time. You've got to be ready, people, because it's coming. There's going to be an hour that God is going to say, I need you right now. Yes. Well, Pastor Juan, what do, I, what do I do in the meantime? You do not sit on your rusty, dusty, waiting for days to get better. All right? Get some fire under your behind. Get up and start getting yourself trained in the things of God. And get yourself equipped in the things of God. Because if there's a call of God, there's going to be a commissioning of God. He is going to say to you, now is the time. Get involved. And we, we heard at the beginning of the year, the word that God gave for 2018 was, He wanted us to get ourselves equipped. And then He said, say it with me, report for duty. Every single one of us. Pastor, but I thought that's for the pastors and the apostles and the prophets and evangelists and the teachers and all those guys. Every single one of us is a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ as you are seated here this morning. Young people, get yourselves ready because I believe you are going to be surprised by yourself when you see the things that God's going to bring and draw out of you. Make the choice to intentionally and deliberately magnify and praise Jesus above everything else that you are doing right now. And the giants you are facing right now are going to retreat. Yes. Your opposition is going to fear your position. The problem is with many Christians is they are out of position. In any, in any sports game, there are guys who are designated a specific position. 
You have it, you have it in cricket, you have it in rugby, you have it in, in all team sports. Every particular player has a position that he plays. What the enemy wants to do, listen carefully, in the way that he does warfare against you, he doesn't care that you are on the pitch and you're playing the game. He doesn't care. You can be there. But just don't be in your position. Yeah. Are you getting this? What he wants to try and do is get you out of position. Yesterday I was watching a rugby match, just yesterday. And the opposition scored a try. And the commentator said this, these were his words. He says, the reason why that try was scored, uh, scored is because that particular player was out of position. He was not there to defend the ball. So guys, get into position. Are you, are you getting ready for this? Man, I tell you, I'm preaching myself into position this morning. I'm getting myself ready. <laughs> as you worship, as you fill your mouth with praise of Him, He is training you in that place. He is training you for reigning and how to warfare with your worship. Here's the thing that happens. Remember we said at the beginning of the year, God said to us, I am going to download to you the giftings and the things that you need to operate in. But I want to say, you have to be on the right frequency in order to receive it. Amen. You've got to be tuned in. It's not just going to fall down from heaven on you like a blanket and you don't know what to do with it. You're going to have to be tuned in and in frequency and in sync with God. And remember, last year I shared a sermon with you that was called, Get in Alignment with Your Assignment. Do you remember that? No. This is what you need to do this year. Get into alignment with your assignment. There are some of you here that have even shared it with us. You've received a word from God and you wrote it down. And that word that you wrote down, when you get that from God, treasure that and keep that because God cannot say something to you and it not come to pass. I want to say that again. God cannot say something to you and it not come to pass. But get yourself aligned. Our doggy. As you know, went for a backup um, about two weeks ago now. A serious big back operation in his spine. Because the, one of the vertebrae was pushing against the spine and he was in incredible pain. We had to take him in for an operation. When he came out from the operation, we had to watch him and take care of him like a little baby so that he doesn't do silly things. And he struggled in the beginning to walk. He struggled to get his, his, um, his balance right. And at times, I'm not kidding you, when you looked at him from the back as he was walking, it's like his alignment was completely out. <laughs> and his wheel balancing. <laughs> it was all out. But as he started getting better and better, the alignment came in place. And our little, our little one, our little doggy, our little treasure, he started walking straighter and straighter. And I look at that and I think it's like some Christians. You know, they're out of alignment at the moment and a little bit out of balance. But I want to say to you that your alignment is going to come right as you start believing in yourself that you can do this. Because this little guy has the attitude of a lion. I do believe that's one of the reasons why he has made a speedy recovery. And also, all three vets have told us, that they have never seen a dog that has gone through an operation like that that has recovered so fast. But we say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because we care about our animals. I brought that in just as a, a that's just an order, just on the side, just for you to, to understand that alignment is very important in this life. The one day I was driving behind a concrete truck. And what had happened, you know those ready mix con concrete trucks. What had happened is the motor got stuck somewhere. And the concrete had settled on the one side of that drum. So from behind the truck, it looked something like this. And the truck was driving like this. It looked like it was going to tip over any second. And I looked at that and I thought, man, I, I, better, I either better overtake or keep my distance because that thing looks very unsafe. And as I'm contemplating this, the Holy Spirit speaks to me. How many of you know He speaks to you at any time? I've actually at one point said, Holy Spirit, would you mind if I just get a little recorder? Because you tell me stuff on the car and I can't remember it all. So I did that. I started taking a little tape recorder. I received one, a gift from someone. One of those that they use for the secretaries where, um, what do they call it? A dictaphone. I got one of those and I started recording the stuff that the Holy Spirit told me. 
So as I'm driving behind the truck and I'm contemplating this, the Holy Spirit says to me, many of my people are like that. I go, Lord, what do you mean? He says, they're off balance. And the things that we believe. And the things that we stand for. And I want to say, God is bringing His people. Those motor, motors need to start working again. And we need to start getting ourselves back in balance so that we can walk in the divine design of God's plan. Amen. amen. He said, Amen in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Now, look at the, look at the scriptures from Psalm 143 um, and 144. It says, Save my life, O Lord, for your name's sake, in your righteousness. Bring my life out of trouble and free me from, say that last word with me, distress. How many have felt, I'll be honest, over the past, the past couple of years that you've had some distress? Thank you for being honest. Psalm 143 verse 12. And in your mercy and loving kindness, cut off my enemies and destroy all those, watch this, who afflict my, say the next two words with me, my inner self. For I am your servant. When you are distressed, you do not have peace in your inner self. Does God care about your inner self? Does God care about what goes on on the inside of you? You better believe it. Many of us have been in non-peace instead of in peace in the things of God. God brings perfect peace. What's the next one there? Psalm 144, 144.1 Blessed be the Lord, my rock, and my keen and firm strength, who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. My steadfast love and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he in whom I trust and take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Now, the reason why I put it in yellow, as we're going to do an exercise now this morning, and I'm going to, while you read it on the board, I'm going to watch you. And I'm going to watch the person whose mouth is not moving. All right. And then if your mouth is not moving, I will call you out. And thou shalt come and stand in front of me here. Uh, and you are going to then say it with me and with the people. All right. So you must, you must say this together. There are seven things. Do you see it? There are seven things in those songs that you need to say with me. Because those are the seven things that God, the seven uh, characteristics of God. He is my rock, my strength. My steadfast love, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, and my shield. At the count of three. Are you ready? Yeah. So you can't even hear on me then. And past the movers lie south. I'm so small and tiny and dainty, fine and refined. I shall move myself, precious wife. Are you ready? I'm still going to watch. I want to see. All right, here we go. We're going to say this together. You're going to preach with me. All right, there are seven things that the Lord is to us. Now, I can't see. All right. Okay. So, at the count of three, we're going to say, my rock, my strength. All right, now, you, that's good. You guys are my rock. All right, here we go. You ready? One, two, three. My rock, my strength. My steadfast love, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, and my shield. That was brilliant. Now, do it again, please. But I'm not going to help you. All right, I'm going to stand with this side. Are right, you ready? Yep. At the count of three. One, two, three. Say it loud. My rock, my strength, my steadfast love, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, and my shield. Give yourself a hand. Come on. That was brilliant, guys. That was brilliant. The only person who didn't do it was my wife. Lovey, will you come and stand here with me? <laughs> I just want you to stand here. I'm just kidding. All right. God is training us to live out that which He has placed on the inside of us. From our position, we must be overcomers, the overcomers that we already are. And this, that picture really depicts it all. That we are armed for victory. We are armed for battle. There is a coming inflation in our nation. Not inflation financially. And we know that that has just gone up to 15%. And inflation is a thing that is always bugging the people of the world. Um, and I'm just watching, they're busy moving the cars and it seems like they are managing.